Hello and welcome. Today we will be going through the badge on idea.org named Python. Uh, I did do this badge, however, I didn't show it on my previous videos on how you can actually do it. I just I did the first half, and uh, uh, that's all I did really. So, and this has been requested by uh, somebody to do, so I'm going to be doing that uh, as a request. Uh, if you would like to, be, to see any more badges done on idea.org, make sure to hit the thumbs up, like and subscribe, and write down the badge you would like to see a walkthrough uh, in the comments below. Okay, so so we're going to go through, uh, this is a walkthrough on how you can obtain this badge, step by step. Uh, so here we go. So we're going to work walk through it and we're going to read everything from top to bottom. So we'll drive straight into our first uh, well, not the first, we'll dive straight into the badge. Welcome. Welcome to Code Code Coder Joe Do Dojo. Python badge is the badge you will use your coding skills to make a quiz. What is this box? This is a challenge box. You will be presented with these throughout the completion of this badge. Challenges must be completed correctly before you can proceed to the next task. This first challenge is simply get you started, so just click I'm re I am ready below to start your journey into learning coding with Python. So let's go ahead and press I am ready. This is the feedback message. These messages will appear when you complete a task and will let you know how well you have done to the next task. What is Python? Option A, the second largest snake in the world. Option B, a clear and powerful object oriented programming language. Choose one of the options below. Well, obviously this is option B, because it's not the uh, it's not the second largest snake in the world. Yes, well, both would be correct. Technically it is, because you could create a snake game with Python, but uh, that's not in this video, so we're going to continue on. Time to get our hands dirty. For, for this badge we are going to learn how to use Python 2.7 to make a fun quiz. This is a really great skill to know, as some logic can be used to test your friends, find people's opinion on certain things, such as business ideas, create your own adventure stories, conduct a referendum, etc. Let's make a quiz. On the next page we'll have a go at the quiz you'll be creating. Show me the quiz. This is what we will be creating. We will work on getting quiz done by introducing you to topics such as variable, conditions and more. Press the run button to run the program and check that you score, uh, check what score you get at the end. So we're going to go ahead and press the run button then. As you can see here, what is your name? Uh, my name is Ryan, so why not? Right, I hope you're ready for this quiz. Let's start the quiz now. What is the largest river in the world? Uh, let's think. What is the largest river in the world? Uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna, we're just gonna put something in here. Just to, this is an example to show you how it would work. Oh no, that's not right. Which animal is the longest lifespan? Uh, kangaroo. Actually, no, it's a turtle. Actually, turtle. Turtle. Um. Uh, what is the biggest planet in our solar system? Jupiter, Venus, Earth or Mars? Well obviously it would be Jupiter. Um, what is the world's population in 2015 in billions? Um, 11.3 billion. Does the otter live in the UK? True or false? true. You finish with a score of two points. Thanks for playing Ryan. Okay. Have you had a go at the quiz? When you're ready to make your own, just press the button below to so start coding. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump straight into this uh, badge. So, output to the console. We need to make sure that we can provide the user with some sort of feedback. We can do this by using the print command of Python. Your Python program will then write the, out, it's the output console when you run the code. 
concentrate yourself. The code below is known as turtle as it as trinket box. Use trinket box to run Python code. You can modify the code you like. Try changing the text or adding an extra print command. So we're just going to do that. Underneath here, here where it says here is another message, we're just going to go ahead and press enter. We're going to type in the word print. And then we're going to put in some um, parentheses. And we're going to just say hello, user. And then we're just going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and run it. And as you can see here, it will say hello, user. So now it says, let's test your knowledge. Now that you have learnt about how to use the print command of Python, easy, right? The code below is wrong. Use the code editor above to fix uh, it with the knowledge of your Python. Once both lines work, copy and paste them into the boxes below and check your answers. So you can see here we've got print, hello, I hope you're ready for the quiz. Well, that's wrong. The way, the way this would, uh, would be, uh, so what we need to do up here is, is we need to go ahead and correct them up here. So we're going to say up here. And it doesn't, doesn't have to be any, uh, a specific place. You can do it anywhere. So we'll say print. And then we're going to go for a parenthesis. Present, uh, parenthes now it doesn't matter which ones you use. You can use the single handed ones or the double ones. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we're going to use the double ones because I'm just used to it. I'm going to say hello. I hope you are ready for the quiz. Simple as that. Make sure it's spelled exactly how it's spelled below, otherwise it won't detect it and you'll have problems with it. So I'm going to go and do this next one. So print. Uh, let's. Let's uh, let's start the quiz now. Dot dot dot. Okay. Now we're gonna press check my answers. Oh, some of your answers were incorrect. Check the feedback. Ah, I didn't notice, but they've, they've used single-handed ones to, to fix this. Just go ahead and replace them with the single-handed ones, like so. And that should fix that issue. Just do that now, and that should fix that issue. Uh, that won't work because of that. It's fine. Okay, check my answers. Okay, so what are we doing wrong then? We need, we need to, we need to. This is where uh, some people would give up straight away here, but just relax. So, this is what what it's told us to do. Print hello. I hope you're ready for the quiz. Right, so the problem with this one, uh, if we were to copy this, and let's just get rid of the other ones here for now. So, he hello, I hope you're ready for the quiz. So if we were to go ahead and run this, it says there's a syntax I run line 12, okay. So, what we need to do then, is put this at the end so it becomes an actual thing there we go so now this this should should mean that this one's green now uh, oh okay so ah ah sorry so now this is what I've got wrong sorry what you have to do is take them do not put them in here sorry this was this is my bad you've got to put them in here so it says let's start the quiz now so let's go ahead and copy this And we'll paste this in here, and you can see what's wrong here. So we're missing a print symbol. So print, and then that should work now. So there we go. Whenever you come across a problem, just make sure you run through it again, because more than likely, so you've just missed something out that can be crucial to actually helping you uh, complete stuff. So we go to the next task. Right, we've got a lot of text. Wow, we've got a lot of text. Right, we're going to use some uh, voices here, because uh, just to make make the, everything a little bit more interesting. Uh, so, 
Variables. A variable is a value that can be changed. These are needed in programs to allow users to input values and for the program to store these and check that they are correct. The variables also store different types of value, numbers, text, etc. Some programming languages require you to specify, declare what variables you wish to store before you run the program in Python. You, mo you do not need to declare variables before you can use them. Neither type, uh, neither their type. Even every variable in Python is an object. This allows you to make some changes to variables through short bits of code. Number numbers. Python supports two main no types of numbers: whole numbers, integers, and decimal numbers, floating point. To define an integer, you do the following, score equals 10. To define a floating point number, you can do it in two ways. You can do it uh, weight equals 10.9 or weight equals float 10.9. Algorithmic. One of the most, uh, one of the things your computer is best at is, best at, at is performing calculations. It can do calculations in, your, in just a fraction of a second that would take a human being a very long time to complete. Python is already used by many programs out there that are doing the insanely huge calculations that would be almost impossible for a person to do on their own. Google uses Python on many of their services, for example. In Python, you can do all the usual mathematic operations as follows. Addition, subtra subtraction, multiplication and division. So here we've got a variable named year of birth, and then we've got the value of that to be a number, we've got a number value uh, variable which is going to be 2002. Current year is 2016, so we do age equals current year minus year of birth, uh, print age 14. Try it yourself. So we run this, and it will say, uh, what was the word population, da da da. Um, I don't know, 13.1, I don't know, 7.3 billion. How many times bigger is that than the population of the UK? Probably six. Okay, close enough. Um, okay, so. Um, so use, use the instructions below, to, uh, below the code to practice some algorithmic and understand variable types. The example shows two quiz questions. The first asks if you can guess the world population, and the second to work out how many times bigger than this than the population in the United Kingdom. Okay, moving on. Running the program above, you will see the answer to the second question is 121.167 times bigger. This value is a floating point value point number that has been rounded to two decimal places. Let's try reducing the rounding to zero decimal places by replacing two with a zero on line 26. Rerun the code and we end up with 22.0. So it says, it says here, we could do with getting rid of the zero, we can do this by replacing the round function to an int function and then delete the two, what happens? Rerun the code, enter, enter in the box below. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look down for line 26, right? We can see where we've got a, uh, where we've got a int function. So we're going to look around and see we've got int. So where we've got a round here, we need to change this to an int. There we go, change that to an int. INT and then you're going to change the times bigger uh, so we're going to change the 2 to uh, we're going to get rid of the 2 like that and now if we run it it says uh, what was the world population in 2015 don't know 7.3 and just give a random answer and we get 1 2 1 as our answer so what we're going to do is going to copy that and we're just going to put it in the box below here that is our answer Let's do some maths. One of the skills you need to be good uh, to be a good programmer is basic understanding of mathematics. 
No need to be the best in your class, but some knowledge is definitely necessary. Let's see if you can fix the following blocks of code in order to obtain the desired out output. So we've got here, we've got result equals three, and then we've got five, print result equals 15. So this is three times five. So we can just do a, a star here. In coding languages, you use a star for times. Uh, just so you know that it's a star. Um, I want to check I've got that correct. Yes, I have. Okay. So, right, what we're going to do now. Uh, oh, is, has, has it got rid of. Oh, no. So, we've got here result equals 15, and our res, so, and we've got 5 here. So, print result equals fifth, is 3. So, 15 divided by 5. So, to divide something, you're going to put a divide symbol, which is a forward slash. Okay, result equals zero blank times five equals twenty. So that's going to be uh, three times five. Uh, so four, no, no, four times five. Sorry, four times five equals twenty. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, check my answers. There we go. So we're going to move on to our uh, the we're halfway through this now. So that's good. Uh, okay, so variables continued. Now you know about variables, let's learn a bit more about how to create text variables. Text strings. Strings are a piece of text your variable holds in Python, which you can then output to users of your program. You can define a string with either single or double quotes as shown. This is what I was talking about before, you can have a single one or a double one, it doesn't really matter. The only difference is, is if you wanted to, to have a, a apostrophe, you would have to have a double one, otherwise uh, you can't do the uh, apostrophe inside of the the single-handed ones. Concatenation. You can also glue pieces of variables together in Python using concatenation. This allows you to be more expressive and create more dynamic sentences to display to your users. To concatenate strings and no or numbers, you can use the concatenation operator plus, as shown below. So we've got population equals 7.3, sentence equals the answer is, and then we've got concatenation symbol, which is a plus. Then we've got the str, which stands for string. That just stands for string, just so you know. And a string can be uh, text, so that's what that can be. That's what a string is. Okay, we've got another concatenation which is going to be billion. So the answer is 7.3 billion. Okay, moving on. No, when concatenating numbers with strings, we must use the str function to convert the number into text. In this case, string population, we learn more about functions soon. Try it yourself. Let's improve the code below in order to take advantage of no our new knowledge of Python variables. So let's go and press play. Uh, we know it's going to be Jupiter, so Jupiter. Okay. So, we're going to go down here now and it says, using the Tinklet code above, let's try to tell the user what the right answer was by editing the final line of code. What we would like to say is the following. Oops, that was wrong. Your answer was, add your answer here. The correct answer was Jupiter. Rerun the code until you get expected result. Once it's working, fix the Google line code below. Okay. So, what we're going to do here is, you can see it says print, oops, that was wrong. The correct answer was. We're going to look up here and we're going to look up for our answer. So let's go ahead and find our answer in here. Um, okay, let's find our answer. So our answer is, uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. What, so our answer is Jupiter. Here we go. This is our answer. So we can grab our answer. And we can place this in here. And don't forget that we'll need to put ourselves a, um, uh, parentheses around, not, around the, um, around our our text so it says the correct answer was oh so your answer was uh, your answer not uh, okay your answer was 
and we're going to have a look up here and we'll see ah so our answer is what the user uh, picked so it would be uh, answer so we'll do answer is that how I spelt it there nope that's not how I spelt it okay answer plus um do 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 so it says oops that was wrong your answer was uh was do 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 plus uh so we can have a look up here and we can say uh the correct answer was and then we're going to go ahead and put in jupiter because that is our uh correct answer so we'll go ahead and grab that copy that guy and put that up here okay now just want to press check okay we've got that right okay so moving on some more variable exercises let's test your new knowledge on python variables the code below is incomplete can you solve the missing pieces create a variable animal and assign it a value of snake so what we're going to do here is we're going to say animal so animal equals snake simple and make sure to put parentheses around the snake because it's going to be a variable which is going to we're going to have it as a string okay and that would be correct so moving on change the code below in order to print out Mount Everest is 8848 meters high so we've got height equals 888 blah blah sentence equals Mount Everest is Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put in H E I G H T. Uh, okay, so why is that not words? So do, do, do. ah, because we need to. What we need to do is we need to put in uh, the string function. So we're going to go S T R, and then inside of here we're going to put in our height. So we're going to say H E I G H T, and uh, there we go. It will give yourself an error, but it, it should. Um, ah, what have we done wrong here? Ah, okay. It just wants. Okay, that's fine. Just do that. That's fine. Okay, so that. Wait, 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 wait. What's going on there? Because that was okay before, wasn't it? No. Okay, so we've got two wrong. That's fine. That's completely fine. We we, we can. Uh, let, we need to work on this, so we just need to change this to that. That is all we need. Ah. Okay, so okay, what we've, what we've done is we've just got this the wrong way around. So we're going to go ahead and put in here. Uh, I'm just going to bring this print. Ah, so you print animal. Okay, okay. Right, okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do snake. equals animal I think I've got that right okay no 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 okay so we must we must be doing something wrong here uh, to get this wrong uh, let's let's try and see what we've done wrong here so animal and snake so we must have had this right then before yeah okay no so we've got that right it's this one up here we haven't ah Ah, ah, I see what we've done wrong. Okay, so our answer would be STR answer. Okay, and then I think that's wreck. No, nope, what have we done wrong there? Okay, and answer. We must have something wrong here. Ah, uh, it probably, it's probably just wanting to be a. It's fine. What's going on here? I can't. I can't type. Hello. Okay, there we go. Finally. Um, I think it just just wants the actual answer. Uh, do do On the second input box, which is variable from your code above, do you want to display? Ah. So we do str. Um. I think. I think this is right. So so we're going to say uh, our answer is Jupiter. So let's um, let's 
go ahead and put our answer in. So our answer is correct. So we go ahead and put in correct here. So we'll just go ahead and copy this. Come into here and put in correct. There we go. So that's what it's what asking for. It's asking for the answer and the correct answer, which you can just do like that. Moving on, we're nearly through it now. We're about 60% through, so uh, that should be good to go. Okay, moving on. Getting the answers from the user. You have now learned how to show messages to the user. You can use print to display your questions to the user. But for the quiz to work, you will need to also get the answers, the input from the user. Here comes the input function. This function takes a string, your question, and gives the entered value to a variable. In this case, your answer is shown below. So answer equals input, what is your name? So then the person would put Alex, and then we can print the answer, which would be Alex. Okay. So, let's go and run this first. So it says, what is your favorite pet? Uh, Tom, just an example. Oh, so you like Tom. That's cool. Okay, so moving on. Changing code around. We will now edit the code above. First, we want to change the question to be, what is your name? Rerun it to see what it does. Next, change the variable from pet to name. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take it in steps. We're going to take, what is your name? So we'll go ahead and copy that. There we go. And we're going to change this to what is your name? There we go. So now we want to change the pet to name. So we'll say that to name. Which means we're going to have to change this as well to name as well. There we go. So now if we rerun it, it will say uh, what we've got. What we've got name not defined okay okay so we need to go ahead and ah we've put a d there accidentally put a d there so that will run out so what is your name uh, my name is ryan oh so you so you like ryan that's cool well that's um so you make sure to subscribe to ryan because he's uh, the person you're watching now just kidding Okay, so now our next step is to change reply underscore back text so it says hello name. I hope you're ready for the quiz again. Rerun it to check. So we need to change that so it says hello and then the name. So we're going to go up to here, reply back. Oh, so you like. So we want to we want to say here, we want to say hello. So we'll just go ahead and type in hello. Hello. And then we're just gonna uh, do this, put a space, and then we're just going to uh, do our name. And then we'll say, um, and then we'll just go ahead and put that's cool. And then we'll put, I hope you are ready for the quiz there we go so now if you run it what we should get is what is your name and then we're going to do uh tom for example oh, oh hello tom that's cool i hope you are ready for the quiz i thought it's about hope wrong it doesn't really matter okay finally we can change the com combine lines two and six by putting what is your name instead of the question inside of brackets on line six and deleting line two we run the code again so we can look up so we have line six ah so we can delete this and it says uh, so we can said put instead of the question question inside brackets on line six deleting line two uh, we can combine lines two and six by putting what is your name. Um, ah, ah, so what, it, what, what it's asking us to do here 
is we can just go ahead and remove line two like that and then inside of the question we can just put in here and put in uh, we can put what is your name that is what it's asking you to do we run that again and it runs fine yeah yeah and it works fine okay so that's good okay so okay now test your understanding what you've done what is the right way to get the inf input from the user so we can look down here it says so we can have name equals input what is your name print name this is actually correct so we want this one okay there we go so that's how we're going to uh, convey our information to the user so if we have a question for somebody what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, our ver so we're going to start off by say making a variable named name and then we're going to put uh, put it equal to input which means going to the user is going to input a, an answer and we're also going to just put across the question what is your name as well and we're going to print print their name that they put in moving on to the next task okay this one's a long one we're nearly there we're close to getting finished we're 15 percent away so what if i told you that in order to build a quiz you actually need to compare answers it's not only do we need to compare we also need to check the answers we need to know when a condition or a set of conditions are met the simplest condition we want to be able to check by compare, comparing answers is whether something is true or false this is known as a boolean it is named after George Booley who was a person for the first defined the an algebraic system of logic in the mid 19th century it is also an example of a binary variable type as it can have one of the two values in the case true or false so a boolean value can either be true or false just so everybody knows what that is a comparison operators these are very various comparison operators we can use including binary operators however we will focus on only some of them equals is so if you want something to equal to something so for example let's say we were to have uh, a number five and a number seven would so say would say we wanted five to equal to seven so if it's not equal to seven then we don't want it to run or we don't want to do anything okay so the less than simple is, is very simple it, it is what it says if you have a higher number so for example if we have a number like 100 100 and we do like if 5 is less than 100 then do this same goes for the opposite the greater than less than or equal to that means that if the number is equal to or less greater than means if it's greater than or equal to okay checking if a user answer is correct in order to check if a user has entered the correct answer we have to test it using the equal to signs operator if an equal state if statement so with an if statement we can check whether a condition has been met the statement will run either true or false other statements else if and else can be then used to further code only when the if statement returns false this is useful for example when your user enters the wrong answer if so here we go here we've got uh, some little bit math so if 4 is greater than 3 then print 4 is greater than 3 uh, then we say print 5 is equal to 5 uh, and then print 4 is less than 2 if you want to do multiple checks to see if different conditions are true you can use the else if statement which stands for else if or elif 
complete some code, add some code below to check if the answer is, is 6. And if so, add 1 to the high score, uh, to the score point, and well done if not. If it's less than, uh, or, or more than, get the program to print that's too low or that's too high. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go underneath and we're going to say, if, uh, we're going to go into, bra uh, parentheses okay and then we're going to type in uh, so we're going to say do 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 so if and then we're going to say uh, if answer uh, if answer yeah if answer is less than five. Oh wait um it's less, so it's less than six, okay? If answer, uh, so we, what we'll do is we'll do, I'm not sure I think, if we do, if answer is less than six, then, then what we'll do is we'll do, um, uh, so if, Okay, so if answer is less than six, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, if the answer do, 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 is it okay? So if answer is less than six, uh, we'll say too low. That's what we're going to do. We're going to print too low. So we'll say print too low. Okay. Now we'll come down here and we'll say if answer is greater than six, then we'll say print uh, print uh, too high. Now we'll say if Um, answer is equal to six. Then, uh, well, if it is equal to six, make sure to do the uh, hypotheses of uh, this uh, symbol here after your if statements. So then we would say uh, print well done. Done. Okay. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to do score equals score plus one. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is run this. So we can say, how many sides does a hexam have? So if we go over six, well, we'll do eight, for example. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, what we need to do is, um, if, okay, if answer is less than, ah, we've got to do an else, else, sorry, what we need to do here is we need to put in else, l if, L if and L if. There we go. Now run that again. Uh, what have we done wrong here? It's greater than six. Ah, ah. Make sure to put yourself a uh, comma at the end of the uh, last one. No, nope. what have we done wrong? What have we done wrong here? Let's have a look. We might not even need to do this, so we're not we're not going to we're not going to do that if if it's like extra. So, what is the right way to complete the code challenge? Let's have a look. So, one of these st statements is true. You can try checking the code and the works by copying and pasting it into the Tinkit. 
You don't need to copy the line and the six or sing well done at the bottom. The if else statement should start at the beginning of the line. Um, start part of the wave along the line. Like example above, if you find this tricky, try typing the code in yourself rather than copying and pasting. Okay. So one of these statements is true. Um, so, answer equals six. If answer is equal to six. Ah, I forgot to do the brackets. That's why that didn't work before. What we're going to do now is we're going to sh uh, just bring this back and we're just going to we're just going to uh, fix our issue that we had. Okay, so we need to do this. We need to do if answer. There we go. So now this should work. We should have this working now if we do this. Make sure when you're doing your math to have um, brackets around your if if statement thing. So if you run this now. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna leave that. We're not going to do anything with that because it's just going to it's more. You don't need to make things more complicated than you need to be. So we're gonna look up and we're gonna see here. So if answer is equal to six, print well done. If uh, else if answer is less than six, print too low. Else uh, print too high, and then well done. If answer is equal to 6, print well done. Else if answer is greater than 6, print too low. That's wrong. Um, less than. So we're, we're looking between two of these. It could be the top one or it could be the bottom one. Uh, if answer is greater than 6, print too high. Okay, I think it is the top one. So we're going to go to the top one. So... Is this true or false? Let's see if you get if you get the hang of it by following the three questions. First condition is four less than three. Well, that would be true, so we'd do true. Is five equal to five? That would be true. Is four less than or equal to uh, forty? Ah. No, this is false because it's not a it's not a string because that would be false. So less than 40 or equal yes it well true yes it is equal to so there we go. Aha. No, so that is true then. The first condition is wrong. Did you type true or false correctly? I think I've typed it correctly. Okay, there we go. There we go. Moving on. We're 83% of the way through, guys. We're nearly there. Okay. Making your code cleaner using methods. One of the things that you end up doing in computer program quite often is code repeat repetition. I can't say it. Repetition. This can be avoided by writing blocks of code that will do the same thing. These are called functions or sometimes methods. We have already used the string method to change numbers to strings. We can also use methods to make checking answers easier. For example, making sure any input is converted to lowercase letters by using the uh, using only, only. So we have much to have to match the letters which the case are in. This can be done through Python's built-in functions. The lower method. It is now time to make your own methods. They consist of three main things. The def word, or keyword, the name of the function, and parameters. Parameters are values that give you a function, which then turn your variable into, uh, you can use within. Think of it like information you need to create a piece of clothing. These can be a colour size texture. You can find an example of method below. Okay, we're just going to go down to here and we're just going to... Um, we're just going to do this, put stuff down here. So, Python also has functions converted into string, integers, int. The import, uh, so string 
So then make sure to check the in integer answers. We got the integers, so we may have to notice that this may example to see number six converted into an interest so we can compare its value of the in int statement. So right, so we've got extra challenges. Here we go. What is the right way to define the function in Python? Okay, so we're looking through here. Uh, so I know of this because I've done I've done coding and I know the difference between them. So, and this is a walkthrough. It doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to like go through it all. I'm I'm, I'm just going to quickly uh, go. This is this is my video on how you can actually get the badge as fast as possible. So. This is the correct one. Def function parameter print hello. So now we've got to fix the following bit of code in order to print out hello world using the function say. So we'll say uh, hello world. There we go. Okay, so we've just got this one to fix. We haven't got, oh, oh say and then we want to do um, hello world can that does that work I think that works no we need to do a string here sorry we need to do str and then we need to do our string which is hello world there we go um, go ahead and press validate no what we got here so remember to use the correct method uh, correctly Correctly named parameter, there it is case sensitive. So, say, ah, sorry, here we go. So, there is a me so we need this ms message. There we go, that's what we need to do. There we go. Moving on 91%, we're so close to finishing. So, you've made it. The final quiz, the final quiz, okay. Ah, you thought this at the end, not really. We have an extra challenge to see if you're really worthy of those idea badge points. The following challenges will include most of the topics you have learned today, so good luck. Outputting a message to the user. Ah, so what we're going to do here is we're going to say... Right, you go, yes, we're going to say... Print... You... Are... The winner! There we go. You're the win winner. The code below gives you an error. Can you fix the problem? You scored. Doo -doo -doo, plus score. Ah, so what we need to do here is we need to do a string. So we do str. And then we do score. S-K-O-R. Score. And then uh, that would work. So that should be yep. So. From the code below, blocks below, which one will output the message, I know Python, to your users? If not true, print I know Python. Uh, if 4 is equal to 4, so that's not right because that's got the, uh, that's a string, not a thing. So, if 6 is less than 2, okay, so if not true would work. Okay, we've got two wrong here. Well, well we've got wrong here, so... Do, do, do. You scored. Um, ah, so so we, what we need to do is um, put them into there. I think. No, that's not right. Right, we need we need to do, so do, do, do what we got wrong here. So message equals you scored plus plus. Um, Plus, what is it? What is it? What is it we're doing? Let's see if we got the answer in here. Uh, might have our answer in here. Okay, okay, okay. So, write your answer in here. So, score. So, it should be str then score that's what it should be okay we got that right For some reason it must I must have spelled it wrong okay we haven't got this right though 
We must be uh we must have a, a spelling mistake somewhere. Let's just copy this line here. And we'll just copy that in. We'll just paste this in here so we don't actually mess that up. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we must be a single handed parentheses that we've got up there. Even though it says it doesn't matter which one you use. Okay, what 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 what's going on here? What what we what we Hmm, okay, so why is that not working? That is the question that we are going to be solving. And uh, you are the winner. To you the user. Oh, print to the user, okay, so print you are the winner. Okay, that should work. Huh, okay. Uh, hmm, okay, so that's not working. Why is that not working? That should work. We should have that working. It should be printing it out. So why is that not printing it out? Um... Do we have anything in here which says you are the winner? Um, let's have a look. Uh, do we have anything that says you are the winner? You are the winner, you are the winner, you are the winner. Um, doesn't appear to be, okay. Right. Okay. So we need. We need. What? What? What are we doing here? It might just be this. We might. We might just be doing this. Let's try that. Let's just try that. I knew that wouldn't work. So why is that not working? Ah. Okay, um, we could try the input, see if that uh, is uh, actual working or not. Okay, so why is that not working? Hmm. Okay, so, uh, we just need to try and print the winner, so, str. Let's let's try this. Let's try this method. Let's try see if we do this method. See if this works. Okay, this should work. No. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Why is that not working? That is the good question that we need to know. Why is that not working? All right. Do we not have anything here that says? You are the winner. Let's have a look. We don't have anything that says you're the winner, so why is that not working? That is the question. Um. Um, well, that one's correct there. Oh, greater than two. Sorry, that's what I'm bit wrong. Right, so this one is the only one that's not working. So, this should be the easiest one. So, we need to work out how to do this. So, print. You are the winner. Okay, that should be working. Right, print. Why doesn't that work? Let's try lowercase and everything, see if that works. Let's just do some troubleshooting methods. 
this is always a good way if you don't know it's working just try try things around you never know what actually might work so that's not working hmm So why ah ah I know what we're doing wrong we are not doing this print space and then we have our answer there we go remember not to do the brackets that's something that another another programming language that I'm using that uses the brackets for that so we do print you are the, uh, the winner finish okay so thank you for watching if you did like and you do want to see more uh, tutorials on this future and earn your badge for uh, other badges. I can do other badges if that is something you want me to do. Uh, thank you for watching. My name is Ryan and uh, if you like this video make sure to thumbs up, like, comment down below which badge you want to see next, uh, a walkthrough done next on uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.